tell me an answer that you got for this. Um, Leslie, what'd you get? 90 what? MJ? Tanner? How much? If your answer's up here, put your hand down. Spin? 89? And Wes? Okay, so lots of different answers. One of those, right? Uh, let's take a look at uh, the different choices here. Turns out the correct answer is 36. Who did that? Tanner, what'd you do? PEMDAS, right. What does PEMDAS mean? First one is parentheses. That's correct. So in your notes today, I want you to write some rules. So I hopefully you've titled your notes to the order of operations and the rules for order of operations. A lot of people learn something called PEMDAS and the P. The P stands for parentheses. This problem doesn't have any parentheses, but we will do problems with parentheses today. So what's the second thing? It's exponents. That's okay because you probably haven't done a lot of work with exponents. Some of you have, raise your hand if you've done work with exponents. Okay. So an exponent looks like this. Like you might have a number like 3 with a little exponent. And that little number 2 is an exponent. Oh, yeah. And that we say 3 squared, which is 3 times 3. But we're not going to be working with exponents yet. But it's still part of the order of operations. So in your notes, you want to write down um, step one to be parentheses, and then step two, the E stands for exponents. Okay, what's the next thing? Tana, which, what's the M stand for? Multiplication, right? So it turns out um, a, the right way to think about this is you have multiplication. Let's read this. It's multiplication or division, whichever comes first. So you don't always do multiplication before division. You do multiplication or division, whichever one shows up in the problem first. So that means when you read left to right, ooh, look at that, took that down by accident. When you read left to right in the problem, whichever one shows up first is the, the, the operation you do first. And when we do examples today, that will make more sense. And then the last thing's going to be what, Augie? So P, E, M, D, addition and subtraction. So step four, the a stands for addition, and the S stands for subtraction. But remember, you always do whichever one comes first. Okay, so if addition comes first, you do addition. If subtraction comes first, you do subtraction. We're going to do some examples. So, Tanner, you got this problem right. I think, Bryce, you said you got it right too. So since he gave us all the rules, Bryce, why don't you tell me what you did first in the problem? Right. So when you take a minute to look at a problem like this, you should first look over here and see if you have parentheses, and you don't. So then you go down and you say, well, do I have exponents? And there's no little exponents. So the next thing you would say is, is there multiplication or division? And at Bryce, it sounds like you thought there was, so you did 5 times 6 or 6 versus that's multiplication, and you got 30, right? Okay, so today from now on in your notes, even if you worked across the paper, today you're going to work down after this. No equal signs, you just work below. So you put like these little Bs to show what your next answer is. And then you're going to copy the rest of the problem the way it was. So the addition comes down, the 10 comes down, and the minus comes down. 
and the four comes down. Okay, Bryce, next step. Three. Right, so now you work left to right because there's no more multiplication. There's no division in the problem. So we look for adds and subtracts, and we do whichever comes first when reading left to right. So looking left to right, 10 plus 30 is 40. And then you bring down the 4. And 40 take away 4 is 36. And let's circle our answer. One thing I want you to notice is when you do a problem like this, you, your problem should be getting smaller. So think of a funnel. Right, your, your problem should be kind of funneling into that final answer. So if you work below the problem, it's going to get narrower and narrower. And that, that's going to be easier for all of us to read. And when the problems get really hard, it's essential that you work below them because it's very hard to work to the right. Okay, raise your hand if that makes sense so far. Okay, so let's see if you could do some practice problems. Let's keep those notes up there and move over here. In your notes, if you guys could please write down example one and remember your rules. So hopefully you have the rules written down. Um, and go ahead on your note sheet to copy this problem, work it out, and then when I ask you, you can share your answer. And I'm going to bring the rules down here for us to look at. Maybe check with your neighbor. Let's listen to what somebody else has to say. So, um, Sean, what did you do first? Oh, I did five times six. Times six. Right, because there's no parentheses, no exponents. So we're going to start right here, multiplication. And I got 30 and then I added nine. So when you do your problems, don't forget uh, to recopy the numbers you haven't used yet. So you're going to get that funnel effect. So that's right, Sean. The next thing you're going to do is add 9 so you get 39. Then you minus 7 and you get 32. And that's your final answer. Raise your hand if you got that. Can you raise your hand if you have a question? Tanner. So on the homework, um, you cannot do mental math. You need to write it down. And it's fine if you did mental math there. But for the next example, I've got some examples set up here. I want you to put them in your notes. So for example, there'll be example two, three, and four. And you guys in the back, too, you need to copy these down. I'm not sure if you've copied the last one down. Okay, so let's try example two and example three. And then I'll, I'll stop you. Okay, who has an answer? What do you have, Nathan? Uh, for example two. For example two. I have six. Six. Raise your hand if you agree with Nathan. Okay, let's check his work. So Nathan, uh, there's some hands up. Let's see if you can convince them or if we can find your mistake. What did you do first? First, I did 6 plus 2 is 8 because it's in parentheses. Right, do parentheses first, so that's 8. And then I dropped the 30 down. Perfect. And then added the minus. And then I did 30. Okay, that's how you want to do your first step. Great. And then I multiplied 8 times 30 times 4. That's correct. And then 6 plus 2 is 8 times 4 is 6. Okay, now raise your hand if you agree with Nathan. You might pull the door shut. That's great. Questions? Wes? We did. We did the multiplication. Sophia? 
All right, who got an answer for example three? MJ, what'd you get? Raise your hand if you agree with MJ. She got eight. Okay, we'll work it. You can work it and we'll compare notes. So what was your first step, MJ? Right, since 12 and 8 are in parentheses, you subtract those first. Four. So copy the problem down if you haven't already done that, like your new step. And then you times 40. 4 times 10 to give you 40. And then I divided 40 by 5. So bring that divide down. 40 divided by 5 is 8. That's correct. Raise your hand if that makes sense. Okay, good. So let's take a look at a little bit harder problem, not a lot harder. Um, so let's take a look at number four. Try this one more problem. This one last problem here. Make the decimals become a mental math problem there. You could do inside parentheses there in your head, right? Think about that. Okay, so Sam got six. Raise your hand if you agree with Sam. Okay, most, many of you, but not everybody. Sam, what did you do first? Uh, so I did five times, uh, five plus six, which is 11, and then uh, 25 plus 0.5. Good, he well, added the holes and the parts. What's 0.5 plus 0.5? One. So inside the parentheses, you really get. 12. Nicely done. So 12 divided by 6 times 3. Now, you've taken care of parentheses. There are no exponents. Is there multiplication or division? Which one comes first? Division. So we're going to do the division first. So 12 divided by 6, Sam? 2. 2. So put a 2 here, bring down the multiply. 2 times 3 is 6. Oops. You said it? You read that correctly. I know. Okay. So that's the kind of the straightforward set of rules for order of operations. Um, in your book today, I, well, first of all, I'm going to give you a log on to your book. So. I'm going to show you how to log on to um, the internet so you can use that book at home or you can bring your textbook home. So if you guys could write this in your note planner maybe or in a note page that you're going to bring home, you're going to log on by saying, typing in www.pearson. Success net all one word dot com. And when you do that, you're going to see username. And you're going to see password. I'll also leave this on the board. Up here, you can see it's up there. The username is Karu, my name. And the password is LMS for Louisville Middle School, 2012, all lowercase. So let's, let's go through that. So I'll come back to this page. It's also on the board up here. So I'm going to show you how that's going to look. So I'm going to open up a new tab. I'm going to go to www.pearson. And it comes up for me quick because I have it as favorites. Yep. So, then you see this screen here. The username was what? Karu. 
And then the password is LMS2012. You can't see that because it's a password. Hit login. You should find a picture of your book. Here's your book. It's blue. So you're going to click on this. And this is how you use it. So you could either type in the page. Like your homework begins on page 49. So one way is to type on the page and hit enter or hit go. And it'll give you a picture of the page. And you can turn the page back and forth. So that's one way. But the other way, if you're not sure, if you don't really understand the lesson, if you notice how I always write 1.10, I do sort of like one point something in the beginning. It's because it's saying we're in chapter one. So if you click on chapter one and you go to section 1-10, let's see if I can get that little, do you see this 1-10? So if you click on that, instead of the page number, it gives you all the examples. So you could go through different examples. And you could do a practice problem if you wanted to. You could click on that. It would give you a practice problem. We're not going to do that right now. But you could do that at home. And then after you read the examples, you can click on the exercises and it brings you to that same page. Okay? Alright, you guys, so I want you to go ahead and set your paper up. Remember, every time you do your homework, you need to put your name, what period you're in, so you're actually in period three. So write that up here. <laughs> write down the section, section 1.10 the page and the problems for today. Every time you do your homework, set your paper up like that so when I correct it, when I collect it, I can make sure I know what you're turning in. And so you can find it. Okay, the next thing you need to do is you always want to copy the problems down. So if you forgot your book, when you open up to page 49, problem one is 6 take away 2 plus 4 times 2. So I want you to copy each problem We're on page 49. So find page 49. Do you guys have a question? Okay, so every time you do a problem tonight, make sure you copy it. Make sure you work below the problem. Space should work out nicely. And don't work to the right. So. On this problem here, there's no parentheses, there's no exponents, there is multiplication. So, Jack, what should I do first? Yeah, you're going to do the multiplication first, right. So, right below the problem, put the value of 4 times 2. What is that? 8, right? And then you copy the rest of the problem down. Can you keep doing the problem for me, Jeff? Um, well, 6 times 2, that's 4. Right, you would work left to right, so that's 4. Bring the 8 down. Yeah, and then 8 plus 4 is 12. 8 plus 4 is 12. That's your final answer, so you circle it. Can you see that? Yeah. What part would you do first, Isabel? Right, the 2 times 5, because it's in parentheses. So this is 10. Then you bring the multiply down. And you do the multiply next, because it's the last thing that's left. So what's 6 times 10? Okay, so that's what I want you to do. 
trying to set your homework up, but there's a, those are the beginning easy problems. I'm going to skip to what is a more difficult example. So when you get to problems in the 20s, you're going to see something like, this is an example of 22. It's not the problem you have tonight. I don't want to do your problem because it would take all the fun away. But problem 22 has two parts with a box in it. And it says, uh, use, what do you think it says? Yeah, Sophia? Use, I think I like to call it the greater than. Right, use a less than, greater than, or an equal sign, right? So you have to figure out, good job, what goes in there? What goes in that box? So um, this is what I would do with the decimals. I would think, try to do mental math today. So if I'm doing decimals, I would say, what's 15 take away 3 first? So you guys tell me what 15 take away 3 is. 12. It's 12. There's 3. And so then after I take away that 3, I'm going to go and take a half more away. So it has to be less than 12. So it has to be 11 and a half. That's right. So you could do that in your head. Do the whole parts and then drop down more. And then I've done the parentheses. So now I'm going to do 2 times 11.5. Who can do 2 times 11.5 with some similar mental math strategies? OK, Jeff. What would you do? Well, I know that 2 times 11 is um, 22, and I know that um, if it was 2 times 5, it would be 10, but that's because it's just 20 minutes, and it's 1. Right, so in his head, he's doing 2 times 11, which is 22, and 2 times a half, which is 1. So this really becomes 23. Good job. So the left-hand side has a value of 23. So how about the right hand side? What would you do first? I would, um, I would probably multiply either um, 15 times 2. But what I would do is that I know that 10 times 2 is 20. And then I'd do um, 2 times 5 is 10. So I'd add those together. Perfect. So again, she's doing some great mental math there. And then subtracting 3.5. And then I subtract 3 first. Right. So 30 take away 3 is 20 what? 27, now you have to take another half away. It has to be lower, right? Oh, yeah. So instead of 27, it's going to be 26.5. Perfect. So now you're going to compare 23 to 26.5. So in the box, you have to make your sign go which way? Where's the pointy part going to go? To the left. You guys understand that? Okay. So that's how you do your home, do your home.